Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. It is exactly 9.31 a.m. This is News and Views on Salaam Media. And next we are joined by the President of Al-Jama, and that is Hanif Hendricks. We are going to be looking at uh, Heritage Day and how we as South Africans, and particularly South African Muslims, should be celebrating this day. What we should be pondering about and how we take our community forward. Uh, Brother Hanif Hendrik, Salaamu Alaikum, welcome to the program. Alaikum Salaam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, we're looking forward to Heritage Day. Okay, so uh, it's not just another day for a braai, which is a, South, a favorite South African activity. It's more than that. What is it that we ponder upon? As South Africans, as Muslims, we do know that, and we are proud, we are so proud of our heritage, knowing that Muslims have made a great contribution to uh, the country, to the shaping of uh, so many areas in this country, including the constitution. So what do you, you as a parliamentarian yourself, want us as the Muslim community to be focusing on this Heritage Day and being better Muslims, better South Africans and better human beings? Yes, a very interesting uh, question. We have to go back now uh, when uh, Sheikh Yusuf of uh, Makassa fought colonialism in um, Malaysia, in a part of Malaysia that is now known as Indonesia. And uh, they vigorously fought for their freedom, and he was eventually banished to Cape Town uh, together with a uh, contingency of his supporters and family. And when Sheikh Yusuf landed in, in Cape Town, he wasted no time in continuing his fight against colonialism. And that has been recognized by South Africa in that Sheikh Yusuf of Makassar is a national hero of the country for his fight against, for starting the fight against colonialism. And he was awarded the Oliver Tambo Medal in Gold as a companion of Oliver Tambo, uh, and uh, that is uh, very significant, uh, that recognition. And today, uh, we find that uh, Muslims are still continuing uh, the fight against uh, 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 apartheid. I know that many people will say that uh, apartheid has uh, now been replaced. So there is now a fight, uh, a fight against uh, the uh, efforts to um, turn around the transformation that we are seeking. So the fight that Sheikh Yusuf started is still continuing. But Heritage Day is a day of celebration. And uh, what we can, what we should celebrate is the first revolutionary song that Sheikh Yusuf introduced to the Khoi and the Sand and the Bushmen because he lived in, in Sanfrey among those people. And then there were many Africans uh, from different countries that heard that this great liberation fighter was in Cape Town and they made their way to Cape Town and they met with him. And some of them stayed with him. And the revolutionary song that he developed was the Ratipul Haddad. Wow. And the Ratipul Haddad is still very part, especially in Cape Town, every Thursday night. You, you find that that revolutionary song, together with the Vikr, together with the recitation of the Quran, uh, together with Nats, together with other cultures uh, that join up, he celebrated every week. Uh, so it will once again be celebrated by Al Jama uh, on Heritage Day, where we're having a special event. And uh, 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 after singing the national anthem, uh, we will also recite the Ratipul Haddad, uh, which is so melodious because you must remember that yes. people have different languages yes. at the time. And what they are impressed with is not what is not the words, not the Arabic words, not the Malay words, not the Indonesian words, but the tune. And the melody. The melody, alhamdulillah. What a beautiful story, 
um, Hanif. Um, and there are so many other beautiful personalities, Muslim personalities that we can and should be remembering and celebrating on Heritage Day. I particularly love the story you've just shared with me. I do know about it, but you've just filled in a few gaps for me there. Uh, let's look at uh, another famous personality, and that is Tuan Guru. Yes, Tuan Guru, his name, he was known as the teacher. So Tuan Guru was on Robben Island. He was Hafiz, and uh, he was in chains, in chains as a prisoner. And uh, he then spent his time uh, to write the Quran from memory. Wow. And uh, he must have written about three or four versions because it is floating around amongst his family. Uh, uh, when I went to Parliament to swear my out of office, I used that Quran uh, to swear my out of office in honor of Tuan Guru. And that Quran is at the Dorp Street Mosque in Cape Town. Uh, it's called the Awal Mosque. The Awal Mosque is mm. uh, like the first mosque with the trial later. And that mosque was donated by a woman uh, who got a freedom such as any cup. And uh, so women played a very important role in establishing the first boss in South Africa. And later on, Tuan Guru established the first madrasa in South Africa, that a very formal madrasa, and the first institute of higher learning, which was actually started by Sheikh Yusuf when he was in San Fe. Uh, he actually had master classes because of the oppression that you couldn't openly uh, teach or propagate Islam, uh, you know, his classes or his courses were just three or four days. And like that, said, people from Africa came all over, they came from Mozambique, and they came for these three or four uh, day classes. So, uh, yes, Tuan Guru is a very important uh, personality that we should uh, uh, also uh, remember. But I also want to talk about Imam Abdullah Harun. And just before you go to Imam Abdullah Haroon, we did do a, 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 an in-depth feature last week with his son, uh, but I will allow you to talk about him. But just coming back to uh, Sarchi van der Kalp, um, she, is, um, she was Sarchi Bartman, but was lovingly known as... Uh, no, no, Sarchi. she wasn't Sarchi Bartman. Was, was not the she same was person. She Okay, this is another Sarchi. Is this okay, the one perfect. who donated monies for the first mosque in uh, Cape Town? Is that right? Yeah, look, uh, Sarchi uh, uh, has got absolutely no relation to Sarchi Okay, Batman, completely thanks for that correction. Story. Okay. Yeah. So Sarchi, ba uh, Sarchi Batman was more with the Koi and the Sand, uh, whereas right. uh, uh, Sarchi Fadithab uh, came from a very pious and religious family with strong ties to uh, Tuan uh, Guru and other Islamic leaders at the time. Alhamdulillah. Okay, uh, you do want to talk about one or two other uh, famous personalities that yes, have impacted deeply. Deep... Right, carry on. Karo uh, the Pilgrim was one of the uh, 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 respected the imams who up in Scottish Kloof. And uh, very interesting that uh, his mother was Siti. Siti is an affectionate name. Siti Paki uh, was a, captured as a slave uh, in Java and brought to Cape Town. But her husband uh, uh, obviously was a Dutch person who bought her. And he allowed her and her son to practice Islam and, in fact, funded Taro uh, trip uh, to Mecca to become the first haji in South Africa. Wow. And that's why in history books is known as Taro the Pilgrim. Okay. And, it, and it's very interesting that, uh, you know, uh, her husband who was Dutch allowed her to practice her Islam although she was a slave, and in fact funded the first haji that went to perform the pilgrimage in Mecca. Uh, and we so effectively call him uh, Karel, the Celtic pilgrim, the pilgrim, 
and uh, and there's a lot of history written about him. Alhamdulillah. And, uh, you know, Hanif, I'm just thinking that um, South Africa or the Muslims in South Africa have a really rich history. Um, and I'm just hoping that uh, our younger people uh, start to learn and appreciate the history where we, you know, where we come from, our roots and how we should be focusing on uh, preserving the history and also making strides in all walks of life and continue keeping the Muslim identity in, uh, you know, uh, alive and uh, to be shown not only in South Africa, but all around the world. Talk to us about some more uh, current um, historic, well, uh, more current figures in the history of South Africa, but Muslim figures. Yes, look, uh... If we come home to Cape Town, for example, we find that uh, following the example of Saad Shifani Kaap, Cape Town Muslim women have played a very important role in supporting their husbands who are imams. And um, we find that many of them uh, funded and built mosques in the poorest areas of Cape Town. Uh, and I think uh, that uh, if we look today, uh, Muslim women are, very, are playing a very important role in order to transform the Muslim community as South Africa is transforming. So the role of uh, Muslim women is very important. And as we know that over the years, uh, you know, there has been a lot of obstacles in their way, which hopefully as most of them have now been removed. So going forward, you know, we're going to have a type of new Muslim civilization uh, in South Africa where Muslim women are playing a very important role in shaping the future of uh, this civilization. Uh, Muslim, uh, many Muslim women are professionals. Uh, they uh, are shaping the narrative. They are taking the lead. So that is the, the message that we are sending out on, on Heritage Day. We recently met with 200 African Muslim women from the townships in Shwani. They came from all over when they heard that here is a gathering of Muslims and we're going to talk about, you know, the way forward with regard to dealing uh, with some of the challenges they have in the field of legislation. So they engage with Al Jama on the uh, on the three poles that we have. The one was the Nafaka pole, that is the maintenance pole. The other one was the Nika pole, and the third one was the Talak pole that we are busy with. Mm. And it was very interesting that uh, many of them were born Muslims, others converted to Islam, but they had an insight of this new Muslim civilization that I'm talking about mm. that is going to change the shape of our community. But that's why al is having these events uh, on uh, a, a, a two-day event, one in uh, uh, Strand near Sanfle, where Islam was started, and the other one in a place called Paul, where Muslims went to hide in the farms after the oppression uh, by the Dutch. And uh, we are bringing uh, especially the youth together, and we're asking the youth, you know, uh, this is some of the proposals we are proposing to government and do a satisfaction survey amongst them. Are you happy? Because it's your future and you've got to carry uh, the torch forward. So so just to wrap that up, you mm-hmm. know, uh, people uh, were fascinated by the victors in Arabic when Sheikh Yusuf came and when Tuan Guru came. That uh, you know, uh, puts you in a spiritual mood. Some people call it a trance. So mm. we're going to have the rapi, uh, uh, a rapid se- sword ceremony mm. uh, performance uh, on the Saturday where the ulama and the imams recite and um, call up the ancestors and um, the uh, great scholars of Islam are inspired by them. And then people, not, I don't say they're going to a trance, but the point is that there's an exhibition where they use the swords and 
and, 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 and you know, uh, hit their arms with a sword, and they mm. don't feel, they feel no pain, there's no mm. blood coming out. And, they, and what is fascinating is the sword cabinet. You must one day have a look at it. 40 swords that are in this cabinet. And it's just a few families that still have, have this cabinet. So we're reviving that tradition, not because of the swords, the fact that these people seem to be invincible, uh, uh, but uh, just to uh, uh, reintroduce the spiritual uh, element and uh, 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 that same. Uh, you can call it a lago. That's what we call it in Afrikaans. A lago would be, you know, your top tone, your treble, and is is used when we make the Adhan. The Adhan mm. is a mm. institution uh, right. where you study for years to do a simple ikama and do a simple Adhan, but it's a, it's, you've got to be trained. It's an it art. Properly. It's an absolute art it's form. Art. Alhamdulillah. That's the right word. The right word. <laughs> I mean, uh, my, my Khalid, can I... We do the art. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the interruption. We do have time constraints. In the next That's few fine. minutes, if you don't mind, um, I know I interrupted you when you wanted to reflect on uh, the late Imam Abdullah Harun. So I'm going to allow you just to wrap up Heritage Day uh, talking about uh, Imam Harun, please. So go ahead. Yeah, look, uh, we played a very important role in Parliament to get the budget, uh, to get the political will. And alhamdulillah, there will be an inquest uh, to uh, determine what was his cause of death. Uh, there's a view, the view of the government at the time, it was an accident, but it was actually torture and murder. Uh, so we're looking forward to that uh, outcome of the inquest so that the Muslim community can have peace of mind. They know what happened. Uh, you know, uh, there are many other victims of apartheid that want closure. And for the Muslims, uh, you know, his uh, loss was a great loss because we needed him now like we needed him then. We don't have him now, but if we can just have closure. And I think we need to remind our youth of the important role that Muslims like Imam Harun and the others we mentioned earlier played, and that they should now also start uh, taking the lead, and they should be the inspiration, the examples uh, for our youth of the women uh, of the future, and it must include uh, women as well. Absolutely. Women like the late Fatima Mir, Rahima Musa, then there's people like Bani uh, Desai, uh, Ahmed Kathrada, and so very many more. Let's hope and pray that future generations of Muslims, um, you know, come about and we have a repeat of the Fatima Mirs and Rahima Musas of the world and our other brothers that I have just mentioned. Hanif Hendricks, thank you indeed for organizing an amazing Heritage Day. Let it just not be a day of a braai, um, you know, discussing mundane, insignificant things. Let's reflect on our heritage. Let's reflect as Muslims, as what we have brought to South Africa, the role our forefathers played in shaping this country and bringing the country to where it is today. I thank you indeed, my dear brother, Hanif Hendricks. Um, and inshallah, we will talk again in the future. And a wonderful heritage day to you, the al Jamal party and all the people that will be attending. Keep us in your du'as. That was Hanif Hendricks, the uh, president of the al Jama party, talking about a very interesting heritage day in the Western Cape. Uh, you know, for us as Muslims, let's ponder, let's reflect, uh, let's realize our worth as Muslims in this country on Heritage Day. We are a part of the bigger picture. It is exactly 9.50 a.m. News and Views on Salaam Media. We will now be talking with Niklas Bauer, Spokesperson Environment and Infrastructure Services Department regarding uh, City of Johannesburg wanting to disconnect from ESCOM. And so do I. But what does that entail for me as a private um, household. I think there are penalties involved there. But Nicholas Bauer will be unpacking that in literally a minute.